welcome to week four of the happy scrappy quilt along and this is our this week is our final step to finishing our quilt top um, so after this if you are sending your quilt top off to be for professionally professionally quilted you'll do that or you can continue on with me as I um, next week I'll be basting the quilt and then finally I will be quilting the quilt on my home domestic machine and I'll show you how I do that we'll talk about uh, different machines and whether it's an option for you to quilt at home on your machine so um, I will have the complete schedule for this entire quilt along in the description below so if you missed anything you can check that out and you can check out the past videos they are all uploaded here on YouTube and um, you can start from week one and sew along with me at any time so today, again, like I said, we're going to be adding our borders. Now, if you haven't finished last week, this is such an easy week that this is a great week to catch up on assembling all of the rows and um, sewing the rows together into your quilt top, the main quilt top. So um, it's a good catch up week. So go ahead and do that. And if you're adding borders with me right now, then let's do it. For my border strips, I'm using two borders, and you can add as many borders as you want, but I'm using what my pattern recommends. And I forgot to mention that this is a free pattern, the Happy Scrappy Quilt Pattern, and I will include a link to that free pattern download in the description below as well. So for the first border, the finished size of the border is gonna be a one inch border, and I'm using this yellow gingham. And they are cut into one and a half inch strips because I want my finish size to be one inch, you add a half inch there. And then for the outer border, I'm using the multi uh, flower pie print. So I am going for busy, scrappy, and that's what, I, that's what I'm really aiming for here. If that's too much for your eyes, then maybe choose a solid inner border or both solid inner and outer border to um, give your eyes a place to rest. For me, I don't want my eyes to have a place to rest at all on this quilt. I am going for kind of retro, um, scrappy, just fun and eclectic. So um, I'm going to move the camera over to my machine and we're going to talk about adding the borders now. All right. So most patterns, when they um, give you uh, the, the measurements for your border strips, they are exact measurements of the sides and the top and bottom of the quilt top. And um, I have just made too many quilts where I was about a half inch off where it wasn't exact. And I had to unpick the strips and add more length. And so I decided I don't like that. And so what I do is I, and this may be controversial, so <laughs> just let me know how you feel about it. But I sew all my strips into one long strip. And then I add them to each side and then to the top and bottom. So um, there are two ways to join these strips. You can join them. Let me get another piece. You can join them just like this, join the ends. And then you can sew. And because I have this um, edging here, I am going, I, you can just cut off the edging, um, just cut it right off. But I actually just end up using it as a guide and go ahead and sew. I just do it the easiest way possible. However, I still do have to trim it because otherwise you have way too much fabric in there. So you can just do a straight stitch, a straight edge like that. And then I would press this open. Um, and I just can finger press this for now. Or... Another way to join your strip, fabric strips is to join them um, the same way, same way you join binding strips, to join them um, at a diagonal, on a diagonal stitch. So I am doing these at a right angle. And again, I could cut off the edging, but I'm not. And um, then I'm going to sew a diagonal from, let me see, get my marker. A diagonal from this corner down to this corner like so that's not a very good line but you get the idea and I just eyeball it um, and here here's what that looks like so I'm sewing the diagonal 
And then I'm going to trim a quarter inch from my stitching, just like I did with the other one, and open it up and it gives you a diagonal. Now the reason why people, some people prefer the diagonal, and the same thing, I'll press it open. The reason why some people prefer the diagonal option is because it distributes the bulk of this seam over a diagonal. So at any time, um, especially in binding, when you're folding it, you're gonna have it distributed. We are not folding this, and so I don't really um, care as much about using the diagonal seam on a border. But a lot of people still do it, they love it, and, and probably do it out of habit even. Um, but it doesn't matter, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna go ahead and do the straight edges because I don't need a diagonal here. And so I'm just gonna keep it really simple. But again, either way is a very valid option. So let's go ahead and sew one long strip and I'll speed this up for you. to go ahead and repeat the exact same process for these wider strips. Nothing is different. I'm going to sew one long strip out of, and these are three inches, so the finished size will be two and a half inches. So these are the outer border, and I'm just going to speed this up. I'm going to do the exact same thing, just sew along the short ends. Okay, so I did finger press these seams, but I'm gonna go ahead and take these to the iron and give them a nice crisp seam, and then we'll come back and add the borders. All right, let's go ahead and add our border, the inner border. Now this quilt, um, I always add my border to my sides first, then to the top and bottom, but this quilt is a square, so it doesn't have definite sides. So just pick any side and that will be uh, your first side and then we'll do, we'll add a border to the opposite side. So I've got this whole long strip and I literally keep it in my lap or I just let it kind of drop on the floor beside me. And this um, selvage edge you can trim off or leave. If you leave it on, I just leave a little extra like that. For now I will trim it off and then for another one I'll leave it on so you can see both. And then I'm gonna match it up to the edge of my quilt top, like so. And it doesn't have to be exact. Um, if you need to go over, it's better to go under. Don't You don't wanna go under. Um, did I just say that? It's better to go over. You do not wanna go under because then you're not going to have enough fabric. Try to put it right up against the edge. And then we're just gonna sew the length of this edge and I will speed this up for you. Okay, so I have reached the edge and what I'm going to do is just trim this so that it's even or a little bit past the edge of my quilt top. Again, you don't wanna go under. So um, I'm just eyeballing it and it's probably an eighth of an inch over or a quarter of an inch over and that's fine because we can trim that later. Okay. 
So then um, I'm not gonna press this now, I'm gonna sew the other side and then I'll press both sides. After I press it, anything that's over, I will trim so that it's even with the edge of the quilt top. So easy, easy. Now, this is where I cut that little piece and I cut it crooked. So, and I've got this crooked. So um, I can already see that. I'm actually, I'm gonna stop and I'm going to trim this because uh, that's gonna be difficult to work with. So this is a great reminder to um, trim up the sides of your quilt just to make sure you're sewing along a straight line. If, if your seam is just a fraction of an inch over or under, that's okay. You can work around that, but um, you wanna make it as straight as possible. So you can see I have a crooked line here, so I'm gonna make it go over the edge, just a quarter of an inch over, and do the same thing. I'm just gonna sew along the side of the quilt. So my sides are done and I still have this full length for the top and bottom, which I'll set to the side as I go press my sides. But I just want to point out why I love this so much. If I had given you the length for um, to cut your strips for each side and the top and the bottom, say your side was 60 inches long. So I had given instructions to cut a 60 inch piece. And if your quilt actually came up to came out to 60 and one quarter inches because of little little errors that can add up along the way. Um, if you're quarter inch on your machine, um, if you're reading it slightly different and you get just a fraction of an inch off on each seam, that's gonna add up. And so this is so forgiving because no matter what um, the, the fraction of error, whether it's zero to half inch, you have that wiggle room um, to so so that you're not gonna be short on your um, border strips. It's just the worst feeling when you get down to the end and you realize you're a half inch short and you cannot work with that. You have to unpick it and add a little bit more. So this just makes it fast and easy and um, flawless. You cannot mess this up. I'm gonna take this now, um, stop and go press the sides open. And I always press my sides towards the border strip because I have very few seams. The only seams I have on the border strips are the joining seams. Whereas on the quilt top, I have seams all over the place. So if I were to press inward toward, um, this seam inward towards all those seams, I'm just adding double the bulk right there. See, all that is getting folded right over on itself and I can instead just press outward and there's no bulk whatsoever. So it just works way better for me always to press outward towards my border strips, which is what I'm going to do. And then we'll come back and add the top and the bottom. Add the strip to the top and the bottom with what we have left. And I'm hoping I have enough, I think I do. Now, right here, I could um, take my ruler and cut this off but I'm just going to skip that step because I'm a lazy girl. So again, I've got a salvage edge, which I want it to go past because I'm gonna trim that off. I don't want the salvage edge to be included in my quilt. And I'm just going to um, align my strip with the quilt top and it's just gonna go straight past. So I don't really need to cut that. I could, but I don't need to. And again, I'm just gonna sew all along the top or bottom, whatever this is of this quilt top.
Okay, so that side is done. And now we're gonna do the other end of this quilt. Now for this last side, I always check that I have enough fabric. So I'm just going to line this up and just kind of measure it along the edge of my quilt like so. Oh, I have more than enough. So we are in great shape. And let me get this bulk of the fabric situated. And again, I'm just going to line this up with the edge of the quilt going over just a little bit, but because it's lined up, I'm going to ignore that excess and just have a straight line there. And so the rest of uh, so this this final side of the quilt. Now, if that excess bugs you, um, you can leave it if it's just a small amount. If it's a lot, um, you'll just want to trim it so that it's flush with the edge. I'm not at a good angle, but you get the idea. You'll trim it so that it's flush with, with the edge of the strip of the fabric after you sew it. If you've left it on and you've sewn, then, then sew your line and then go back and trim those. If it's just a small amount, I leave it. But if it's a, a big chunk of fabric, I always cut that flush. see here I'm just going to trim that any extra just trim them flush and then you can turn it over trim that flush again when it's a small amount you don't have to do it for a larger chunk you for sure want to do that so I'm going to go ahead and press these open and then we'll add that second border when I add a second border I always want to start on the same sides that I started with on the first border so let me get this up here. You can see I started on this side and the way that I know that is because this top side overlaps over the top. So this one is kind of tucked under. So this side and the opposite side were my first sides and those are the ones that I'm going to start with. So I'm going to line this up exactly the same way. I'm gonna ignore my salvage, salvage edge. Well, I'm gonna run my salvage, salvage edge off of the edge because I don't want it in my quilt. I don't want all these dots in my quilt, the little holes, and um, align it straight with the edge of my quilt top and just start adding this edge. And again, we're just going to trim off our excess and I'm going to go in and trim this off just a little extra bit. And then at this end, trim that off. And then I'm going to turn this over and trim that so it's somewhat flush. This outer edge won't matter as much because, um, well, it just doesn't matter as much, but trimming those and then I'm going to, now we're just starting to get really bulky with this quilt and that's great. So I'm going to find my opposite side and add the border in the same way. I've got such a crooked edge that I'm going over the edge instead of matching it up flush. And we'll sew that on.
Okay, I'm gonna press those uh, side borders and then we'll come up and do the top and the bottom. Same thing here, we are going to add our strip. I've got still quite a bit left of our one long, we'll call it a unistrip, <laughs> unistrip, a uniporter strip. So I've got one long strip and I'm just going to continue by lining this up with the sides making sure that it goes over the edge and we'll add this to this top and then to the bottom. Okay, so we've got a little bit less length left over. And for both of these um, extra bits, just save those for another project. Those are still great usable pieces of fabric. So again, I'm gonna trim this inside, whoops, inside bit. And we'll go over here and look what we have. But I'm gonna show you that I'm not gonna bother trimming this excess because I'm going to be laying this out and basting it and then I'm quilting the whole quilt top. And after I do that, I will be coming around and trimming all of the edges um, so that I can bind it. So I don't need to trim that right now, that outer piece, but the inner pieces, that one looks great. I think I trimmed those earlier. Oh, this one needs trimming. These inside ones, just to reduce bulk, I'm gonna trim those. And um, so I'm going to take these over and press these edges and then we are done with our quilt top. Woohoo! Okay, you guys, our quilt top is finished and I am so excited about this. Honestly, this could be the happiest quilt top <laughs> I've ever made. I don't know how else to describe it. These colors just take me back to kind of, I don't know, it's both cheerful and super comforting to me. I just love the eclectic feeling and I just love those flowers and the gingham. It's all so perfect. So um, our two borders are added and this could be the fastest part of making this quilt. If there's no measuring, you're just sewing these strips together and sewing them to the sides, then to the top and bottom. Um, you can use this technique for every single quilt. As long as you have enough length, you're not gonna worry um, about exact measurements at all. It just takes the math out of one portion of the quilt, which for me just feels so good. I'm, I don't, I love quilting and I know quilting is a lot of math, but I don't like the math part. I like the creative part of the quilting, but that does involve math. I just love that this just takes the math out of it. So we're done with this week. Um, next week, um, come back, we're going to be basting the quilt. And then the week after that, we will be quilting it on the domestic machine. And then finally, the last week, we're going to do the binding. So we'll talk about all of those things and walk you through. If you're a beginner, you're gonna learn all the things and hopefully I'll cover all the basics that you need to know for, um, for all of these steps. And um, again, the free pattern download is going to be in the description below. And along with the schedule, I'll have that schedule all written out below so that if you missed anything that I said, you can go there and take a look. And um, anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun. This is so satisfying. This is the most satisfying part for me is just finishing that quilt top. Not the most. Finishing the binding is the most satisfying part, but I love finishing the quilt, quilt top. It just feels so good. 
So um, thank you for joining me and I hope to see you next week. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.